I think something very special uh, happened in our community uh, through January and February, and it's certainly worth talking about what everybody here did together uh, to, to make our community a much better place. I know we've got some of our great voluntary organisations here today, and they of course have been out there volunteering and doing great work in our community for a long period of time. And that's one of the things that we celebrate uh, at our Lily Australia Day award ceremony every year, uh, what our local volunteers do in our community. The thing that I found so uplifting uh, in, uh, in January and through February was the way in which we discovered something about our community, and that was that there were a lot more volunteers out there who were willing to come forward. Because I know talking to a number of people around here and people who've worked in our voluntary organisations for a long time, there's been this sort of nagging, uh, worrying feeling in those organisations about where the next generation of volunteers was really going to come from. And what was so fantastic about what we experienced uh, during January and February was we found out an answer to that, that in fact new generations of volunteers were actually out there and willing to come forward and work with uh, traditional organisations but also to work in different ways to, to volunteer their time uh, to help fellow Australians in distress. In my job, I go around the, the world a lot. I end up in many different locations, uh, whether it's a G20 finance minister's meeting or whether it's a leader's meeting or whatever. And what Australia actually did during the, uh, the floods in Queensland and then in response to Cyclone Yasi uh, in far north Queensland wasn't just noticed here, it was noticed well worldwide. The way in which Australians simply came out uh, to help each other. The, uh, the, the demonstration of our community spirit uh, was there on show, not just to ourselves, but also to the world. And it was, a, it was something that was noticed as I went to meetings and people spoke about what had occurred in Australia. You could tell that they thought there was something very special about our country and our community spirit. And for those in the room who've done it tough in terms of getting volunteers in the past, I think everyone in those organisations felt that as well. They felt that something, uh, something new or something different had happened. Perhaps we were just uh, adjusting, if you like, but the fact is that through organisations like Faith Relief, we managed to contact a new generation of volunteers who came forward in so many different ways, and it wasn't just Faith Relief. I had been away when the floods hit in Brisbane, and I returned back, and I came back uh, one morning, and I went out to Zilmere, and I discovered out at Zilmere at the council depot, I walked around a corner and there was something like 300 people filling sandbags and it hadn't even flooded in Zilmere. <laughs> and I walked along the line and I was asking people, well, you know, how did you hear about this? How did you get here? Social media was the answer. So one of the things that we learned was that there are different ways to communicate with people, that they're really there, the willingness to be involved, the willingness to help is there, but perhaps there's different ways in which we tap into that. Perhaps we have to go about it in a slightly different way. But we can, we can actually touch individuals, we can talk to them in different ways, and they will volunteer in different ways. Which is one of the reasons we're here today, because uh, Danielle over there, Prismani, uh, put together Baked Relief. And I was just talking to a couple of the volunteers in Baked Relief. And they said, well, we couldn't go out and do anything like, you know, shift furniture out of houses, row boats, dig holes, or whatever you want to do, that, those physical things. We were frustrated about how we couldn't really contribute until Baked Relief came along. So Baked Relief, a new activity provided, and, and, and the use of social media provided the way to generate a whole lot of other volunteers who came out. And I thought it was something that was really special. Baked Relief has gone international. And I'll leave it to Danielle to talk to you about that. But, so many people across our community just rose up and they were delivering uh, all of these uh, tremendous food uh, to, to the, uh, delivering all of this food to the office. In fact, I was wandering around wanting to eat it and the office was saying, you can't, don't touch, don't touch. But it was just such a, a, a fantastic uh, response. So I thought it was 
worthwhile today just to have an afternoon tea to say thank you to all of those uh, who participated. Uh, and also the opportunity for some of our, our other organisations here today to uh, put their shingle out as well. Uh, we always thank them for what they've done over a long period of time, but to bring all that together and an opportunity particularly to say thank you to Danielle. So thank you to all of those of you who participated uh, in the Bake Relief, uh, and uh, thanks particularly to Danielle, who I'm going to throw to now. Thank you, Danielle.